everyone, and welcome to Teaching Natural. My name's Dare. I'm a fourth year high school English teacher, second year AVID teacher in Southern California. And so today's video is about classroom setup essentials. So these are things that through the three classrooms I have had to set up and take down in my teaching career, things that I notice, if I have these things, it just makes my classroom set up so much faster, so much easier. And I try to think of things that were universal, no matter if you had drywall or um, concrete slash cinder block walls or bulletin board walls where you can staple in really easily. I try to make sure that these are things that are just gonna help you out no matter what kind of classroom you're in. So the first thing is painter's tape. Painter's tape is so helpful. I wish I had taken video of it when I set up my classroom last year, but I didn't. All of these letters that you see here, and if you're following my classroom setup slash classroom tour series, you'll see all of my bulletin boards. I used painter's tape to put all the letters with the correct spacing that I wanted and then put painter's tape on them, stuck them up on the board so that I could see if that's how I liked the spacing or the formatting or if I wanted to tilt it or make it curve in some way because you'll see some of my bulletin boards are curved. If I wanted to do that, I used painter's tape. And that way you can put it up there, see how it looks before you staple and then staple it in or if you're using cinder block walls, hot glue it in. Painter's tape is also really good if you need to divide something, like you'll see my whiteboards and my agenda are divided and I use painter's tape to make straight lines so that it was just easier for me. So painter's tape, there's also different color painter's tape. My classroom colors are um, navy blue, pink and gold. So this blue tape worked completely fine for my classroom, but if your classroom is any other color, you can get different colored painter's tape to help you. The next item that is super useful to classroom setup is Goo Gone. Um, you can get this, I think like four bucks at Home Depot or really any automotive shop will have Goo Gone too. Especially if you're putting like vinyl or stickers on your whiteboard or things like that, or the previous teacher who was in the classroom has vinyl or stickers that you wanna remove, just using Goo Gone a little spray um, and then you can use like a credit card or some sort of card to peel it off. Goo Gone makes it so easy to get off sticky things. The next thing I would recommend for your classroom setup is a power stapler and power staples. So my power stapler was, I think like 10 to $14 at Lowe's. I know it wasn't any more expensive than $15 and the extra pack of staples was really inexpensive. Power staplers, I have two so that when someone helps me, usually my dad helps me put up or take down my classroom, we can just go, go, go with a power stapler, keep one loaded. It's just so helpful, especially if you have drywall and you keep hitting a stud, the power stapler for the most part will go right through it. You can use a regular stapler, but a power stapler is just easier on your hands. In the same vein of classroom setup, stapling things, a, I don't know exactly what this kind of staple remover is called, but it grooves a bit so you can get under a staple in drywall. The claw staple removers, they rip off drywall or they'll rip paper very easily but using this little staple remover, it allows you to be gentler to go in and pop things off without like ripping your paper for your bulletin boards or destroying the fabric for your bulletin boards. So I highly recommend this staple remover. The next thing I'd recommend for classroom setup is a measuring tape. Measuring tape, so helpful if you need to measure your bulletin boards. That's personally what I do. Every time I set up a bulletin board, I measure them all out measure twice, cut once, and then just cut it so that it's super easy and consistent. Also, I use a measuring tape to keep track of the measurements of my bulletin boards so that if I want to eventually change the theme or if you're purchasing fabric for your bulletin boards or for your wall, if you just measure it all out, keep the measurements. That way, for the most part, even if you have to change classrooms within your school, most rooms are about the same, so you can just keep the measurements every time you need to purchase something or you wanna change something up. 
in the same vein of measuring, yardstick or meter stick is incredibly helpful when you're measuring and you're trying to align things. I did not use my meter stick as much setting up this current classroom, but it is super helpful. The next thing, hot glue gun and glue sticks. So helpful if you have cinder block walls and you wanna put painter's tape and then glue your bulletin boards or glue things onto the walls or if you want to do, you know, cool backgrounds or things like that and you need glue stick, a hot glue gun is just, if duct tape can't fix it, a hot glue gun can fix it. <laughs> the next thing I recommend are command hooks and extra command strips. They work really well on whiteboard. I have some all around my room to hold up like my bathroom sign out, my library sign out my emergency folder for when we have fire drills and things like that. Command hooks are just great. If the command strips aren't working on your walls, you can always just hot glue the command strip on there and that works too. The next thing on the list is a permanent marker. This is just helpful to mark up anything or take measurements or on your bulletin board paper if you need to mark where you need to cut. Permanent marker, can't say how helpful enough it is. The next thing is a box cutter, or you might also hear them called utility knives. I got this utility set. I know it was on sale. It was like $5 at my Subaru dealer. So check the clearance section in your car dealer. And these are just great for when you need to cut open a box, obviously. But I actually used them for my bulletin boards. I stapled up the bulletin board paper, and then we took the box cutter and just cut right down the side a nice clean line. Uh, because I cannot cut paper, like how people get that nice smooth going and it's like so satisfying, especially when wrapping presents. I cannot do that. It rips all over the place, but a box cutter, super easy. You don't dig in like super deep to where you're scratching the drywall, but it is a nice, clean, easy line. It goes through regular paper, better than paper, and then it'll also go through your bulletin borders. So you can just use that to cut up. Also, if you have outlets on your bulletin board or like if I wanted to do a bulletin board right here and I needed to go around that little outlet, you can use your box cutter to just cut out little slashes and then easily remove. Like there is my um, projector, dashboard, launch pad, whatever you want to call it, that controls all of that. So if I wanted to continue this bulletin board, I could have easily just used a box cutter to cut around that. The next thing, it sounds really silly, but like some sort of checklist organization, I just made this real quick in PowerPoint where I have um, title boxes and then a checklist. You want to keep track of what you need to do for your classroom and you wanna arrange it by things that are going to take you the most time to the things that will take you the least time. Obviously, I would like, for example, bulletin boards take forever. Even if you have like two, three, four people, it doesn't matter, bulletin boards take forever to put up. So I always start with my bulletin boards first. And the next thing, if you've been watching my classroom setup vlog, you know I've been painting and sanding bookshelves and I had to label books which is a time extensive task. Um, organizing your desks, that is something that takes a lot of time. So you wanna do those kind of big ticket items that are going to really determine how your classroom feels first. And then the little decor items that are gonna take maybe you know 30 seconds to a minute to figure out if that's where you like the organization, those things can come last when you only have you know a few hours until meet the teacher or a few hours until the first day of school. Um, so keeping a checklist just helps you visualize everything. And you don't have to write all of the things you need to do on your checklist first. If that helps you, do your thing. For me personally, it would give me anxiety to see, you know, 30 things that need to get done before school starts. So I just go by a day and say, okay, this day, what do I need to get done? This day, what do I need to get done? And things that on the last day, I can push back, that's fine. So checklist. The next thing I recommend are bar mops. 
Yeah, I know these are kind of filthy, but they're meant to be filthy because they're cleaning cloths. I think I got a pack of like 24 from Amazon or from Home Depot, one of those. But these bar mops are so helpful for cleaning your whiteboard, cleaning off desks, cleaning counters, anything you need to clean instead of going through like roll upon roll upon roll of paper towels, just get you a few bar mops. That way you can, you know, if they're not super nasty, you can just wash them and reuse them. I use these most of the time for my whiteboard when my whiteboard gets really dirty or if I need a new Expo eraser and haven't had time to go to the workroom and grab one, bar mops. The last thing that will be helpful for a classroom setup is fishing wire. Now it's funny, you can't see it on camera until I go there. If you need to hang something and you want this kind of invisible look, fishing wire. In my classroom, and especially you've seen them in my classroom setup video, I have lanterns and I also have table labels hanging from my ceiling. And to give it this invisible kind of floating whimsical look, I just use fishing wire. This is 25 pound fishing wire and this is 565 yards of fishing wire. I think I got it for like 11 bucks at Big Five or really any camping type store will have fishing wire. It's so strong, like it's a, it holds 25 pounds. So I do, there's not very much that you need to hang up in your room that would be more than 25 pounds, but they do have, you know, heavier fishing wire that is still thin, you still won't be able to see it. So if you need to hang something up, you wanna have a really cool look or students are wondering like, whoa, how did you get, you know, something that appears to be floating? fishing wire. Alrighty, so those were my tips for classroom setup to make your classroom setup and take down easier. If you have suggestions of things that you use, your ride or dies, your go-tos, please leave them in the comments below because that'll be so helpful for myself as well as other teachers who come across this video. Now, in the meantime and in between time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!